Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson one of the simple series of my 6809 assembly programming tutorials. In the simple series, we create single assembly file examples. This is just one file that you can compile and do a simple task. And the intention is that you can take this and use it as some kind of template to build your own game or program with. So today we're going to be looking at, it's a sort of combined example. We're gonna be looking at how to draw a bitmap to the screen, a single eight by eight bitmap, eight by eight pixels that is. And then we're gonna be moving it around the screen with our joystick in this case. So you can see we are able to move the smiley around the screen, but it won't actually go off the screen. Um, it's gone off the um, off the recording window there, but it is still on the screen. So um, it, we've got some range checking, we've got joystick reading, and we've got a single sprite being drawn. As I say, hopefully you could take this and build into some kind of simple little game. So what we'll be doing, let's go over to the source code and let's take a look at it. Let's look at what we've got. So this is the example, um, as the um, text says up there, all the source code can be downloaded from my website as well as the build scripts. So hopefully you'll be able to get started with this yourself. So our cartridge starts, we're building a cartridge here. Um, our cartridge starts at memory address C000 here, and we are setting that as the origin. And we're turning something known as padding off. And now this is um, the assembly I'm using would by default um, zero pad work to the word boundaries. So everything would be at 16 bit boundaries and that's, that doesn't really work for me. So I'm turning that off. It, it causes problems with some of the headers I have to create and things. So that, that's turned off there. We're starting our program here. Now that program start is actually defined by the cartridge footer. There is a reset vector here at FFFE here. Um, so we're putting that there and we are putting the address of the start of our program, which is at C000 here at that position. And um, we're also padding to 16 kilobytes by doing that. So our cartridge is 16K. Okay, at the start of our program, we're defining a valid stack pointer. If we didn't, we wouldn't be able to do calls or anything, which would be a bit of a problem. And then we're going straight into our program. And this is a very minimal program here. So um, there may be things that it, ideally we should do, but we're, we're just skipping down to the sort of bare minimum to get this working. Now we're using screen mode P mode three, or that's what it's being referred to as. Now this is a four color screen and um, this, that's what we're using. Now here is our bitmap. So this is going to be two bits per pixel. So these two bits here are the leftmost color. These two are the next color along and these are the right two of the four pixels that make up a byte. So this is four pixels and this is four pixels and that makes up our eight pixels horizontally. And then there's eight lines and that's our eight pixels vertically. And this is our smiley. And you can kind of see, if you look at the ones here, you can kind of see the circle shape of the smiley face there. Now, if you want to create your own sprites, you can use my Acro Sprite Editor. I'll just get it up here. Here it is, this is Acro Sprite Editor, my free open source sprite editor. And you can create sprites, that's how I created today's sprite example. I just converted it to a to text and pasted it in line, but the actual bitmap graphic was created with Acro Sprite Editor. You just go to the menu option, in this case 6809, and you would select the dragon and save raw for color bitmap and that will export it in the format that I used for today's example. So that's how you can create a sprite. Now to select a screen mode, we have to um, clear and set various bits of some of the parameters here. And then we need to send some specific values to some of the other ones. Now we're not gonna go into these. The, these are just the ones that you use for P mode three. If you want to see the other P modes and the other graphics modes available and the other color palettes, please see my platform specific series. I went through all of the examples in that and I showed how to set each individual one. So in this example, we're using this single screen mode because I think it's a nice middle ground that we can use for an example, but the other ones are just fine and you could convert this relatively easily to work on them. So please see that example. So we've got our screen mode set up and we've set the screen base, the base of the video memory to hexadecimal 400, that memory address. So now we need to clear the memory and we're gonna clear hexadecimal 1800 bytes from memory address 400. And we're doing that by setting Y to the top of the range and then decreasing until Y reaches zero. So Y, the last clear of Y will be when Y equals one, which is why we are subtracting one from the base hexadecimal 400. But that clears our screen memory here. If we didn't do that, we'd end up with garbage on the screen. Now, this is our main loop. We're gonna skip over that just a moment and we're gonna have a look at the other functions that we need to do the job. So we've got our bitmap here, as we've discussed, but we need to draw that to the screen. Um, here is the routine we're gonna to use to do that. And here is the routine we're using to calculate a screen address. You see what we're doing? We're taking an X and Y position of our smiley and we're gonna convert that into a memory address where we need to start drawing that smiley. 
So that's what we're doing now. The memory address base of the screen memory is hexadecimal 400. So that's the top corner of the screen, so to speak. And then the lines are consecutive in memory, which always makes things nice and easy. They aren't on some systems, but this one they are. And each line is 32 bytes wide. So all we need to do is take the Y position times 32 plus the X position plus the screen base of hexadecimal 400. And that's what we're doing here. So we are transferring Y to D here and then we are loading A with the amount we want to multiply. Now if we were using a different screen resolution that might be different but that's the one for this. So that's what we're doing. And then we are adding the screen base here and then what we want to do next is we want to add the X position which will be from 0 to 31. We're having to juggle things around a little bit here. Basically what we want to do is add B to X but we can only do that by transferring the X coordinate into D and so that's what we're doing here. And then once we've done that our uh, new memory location is going to be in Y, that's the destination for our writes. So then what we're doing is we're getting the source for our write, so that's our bitmap, our smiley graphic, we're loading that into X, and then we're going to loop and we're going to transfer each of the bytes. So we've got an inner loop, which is the drawing of the bytes across the screen, and an outer loop going down the screen, drawing the lines. So our outer loop is going to be eight lines, and our inner loop is going to be the number of bytes per line. Now there's eight pixels, and there's four pixels per byte, so eight divided by four is going to be just two. So you'd need to change that if you were using a different screen mode or a bigger sprite, of course. And then what we're doing here is we're loading a byte in from the sprite, we're then doing an EOR command with the byte on the screen. This is what I refer to as an XOR sprite. And this means if we draw the sprite in the same position twice, it will disappear because it's inverting what's already on the screen. And this, this makes it easier for us to remove the sprite. We don't need two routines to do it or two sprites. We don't need anything that complicated. So this is a nice, simple way of dealing with it. So we load in our bitmap graphic bit byte. We then EOR with the screen byte and we store back to the screen and we're incrementing the X and what source and the Y destination here and here. We're then decreasing B, which is our loop counter, and we're repeating until all the bytes of the line are done. Once we've done the line, we then restore the previous memory address of the screen memory. And then we, what we've basically done is we've drawn across the line and then we jump back here and then we move down one line and we do the same again. So we do, we're restoring the original Y position, adding 32, effectively moving down one line. And then we are repeating until all of the Y lines are done. And that is drawing our sprite, our smiley, at position X, Y on the screen. So that's what we're using there. Okay, so we're using that, as you can see here, just to show the sprite to the screen. So now we're going to need to read in the joystick of the dragon. And the way we do this is a little bit odd. The dragon uses an analog joystick. And so this means it can have a range of values and the middle will be the center point. And if we press the directions of the joystick, then the value will go down and up. And we're gonna have to compare it to two values. And if it goes outside of that range, we're gonna consider left or right to be pressed or up and down to be pressed. We're, we're just converting it basically to a digital style joystick for simplicity here. Now the dragon uses the keyboard matrix to transmit the state of the joystick. And it also uses the digital analog converter. So what we need to do is we need to pass a value for the digital analog converter to compare. And then depending on the current joystick position, we will get a true or false value back. And we will need to use those to convert that to a direction. Okay, so to start doing this, the first thing we're doing here is we're disabling the keyboard by writing 255 to FFO2 here. That's to stop the keyboard interfering with our joystick. And then what we're doing next is we're processing the fire button. Now the fire button is always in bit zero of FF00. So we're just shifting bit zero out there and we're moving into B. Now B is going to be our build up for our directions. And then what we need to do is we need to select the X axis. And we do that by writing this value here to FFO1. That selects the source data as the the x-axis and then we need to specify a test value and we're using this value here and we're storing that to ff20 and then bit 7 of ff00 will now be the result of that comparison and the comparison we've done here will result in a bit 0 in bit 7 if the right button is pressed here. And so what we've done there is we've got the state of the right button. Now we're gonna to have to flip some of these bits later, we will do that. But what we're doing next is we're using a much lower value and then we're comparing that, again, storing that comparison value to FF20, reading the result from FF00. Bit zero is the result and we're now checking for left and this will be true if bit seven equals one there. 
We're then doing the same for the y-axis. We need to store a different value here. Uh, we're using this value here, both bits are one here. We're storing that to FF01, that selects the y-axis. And then we're using the same comparison values here to check for the down direction and the up direction. But again, the, the bits are going to be sort of opposite depending on whether they're true. And so finally, what we do is we flip the down and the right bits and what this basically results in is that the bit will be one if the direction is not pressed and it will be zero if the direction is pressed. And so that has given us a sort of digital joystick as a result. So we've now got some directions that we can easily work with. So we're now ready to start doing our program moving the, moving the sprite around the screen. So first of all, we show the initial position of the sprite. Now we're using an XOR sprite. So again, if we draw in the same position twice, it will remove it from the screen. So we're showing the starting position here, defining the starting position in X and Y here, and then we're reading in from the joystick and we're checking if any directions have been pressed and if they're not, we're just going to wait until one has been. Now when a direction is pressed, our first action is to remove the sprite. We need to draw the sprite in the same position again to remove it and if we change the position then we won't know the original position. So we're removing it as soon as a key is pressed here. We're then testing each of the direction bits up, down, left and right here. If a direction isn't pressed, if this is non-zero, then we're skipping over the next section because we, we, we don't need to process that direction anymore. But then what we're doing is we're checking the X and Y position, in this case the Y position of the sprite, and we're seeing if it's already at the limit of that direction to stop it going over the screen. So if the sprite is trying to go up, but it's already at the top of the screen, we're skipping over the command to, to process that. And if the sprite's at the bottom of the screen and we're trying to go down, then we skip over the command that's going to process that. And the same with the left and right there. Now, the way we're increasing and decreasing, there's no ink and deck commands for the X and Y registers on the 6809, and there's no add immediate. But what we can do is we can use the load effective address command with an immediate and with the register, and that will effectively do the equivalent of Y equals Y plus four, or um, X equals X minus one and X equals X plus one. That's what I believe is the best way of doing these on the 6809. Now, once we've updated our sprite position here, we use our show sprite function again. That will show the new position of the sprite. If it's changed, it might not have because if the sprite was already at the limit, it won't have moved. And then finally, we've just got a little delay to slow things down and we repeat and that will start the procedure again, allowing us to keep moving. And that's how we end up with our smiley moving around the screen. There we go. And so that's how we've managed to get that and how we've managed to create those range limits. Now, of course, the idea is that you would take this and potentially make it into something a bit different, you know, make your own little game out of it. What you could do is you could create more bitmap sprites and then you could modify the sprite drawing routine uh, using a different address for the source data here. You'd probably need to store that in the zero page somewhere, but you could use this and you could also change the sizes of the show sprites if you wished. And um, you, know, you could hopefully start to build this into some kind of little game of your own. That's the intention. So I say you can go to the website, you can download this source code for today's example. And uh, as I say, if you manage to make something amazing out of it, you're welcome to do so. You don't need to give me credit for it because I've not really done very much at all. It's just a little example, really. Anyway, I hope you have some fun with it. Um, if you do, um, please hit the like button. If you like the videos, YouTube recommends them to more people. So if you find this beneficial, hopefully they will as well. And it would help me out if you subscribe to the channel as well. It keeps my motivation up, keeps me making more videos for these systems. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video today, please consider supporting my content. It takes 20 to 30 hours a week to keep making these videos. It's basically all I do when I'm not doing my day job. And it's only through the support of my patrons and the other sponsors that I'm able to continue Justify doing it, essentially. You can back me on Patreon. I post a weekly update with the latest work on the current projects I'm doing. You can see one here and also the newest videos. There's a large backlog of videos that are currently only available to the patrons, although they will all be available to everyone later on. And also it's the backers who I ask when it comes to making decisions on how to change the content in the future, what new content to create and things like that. You can see there was recently a survey of the backers so I can plan next year's content. As well as Patreon, you can now become a member of my channel on YouTube. There's a join button you should see just below this video. You can use that. YouTube backers get the same content as Patreon. I just post it through the YouTube interface instead of the Patreon. It's the same content every week. Also, if you prefer, you can go to my Teespring store and you can get some Chibi Akamas merchandise or some Learn ASM merchandise if you prefer, if that's how you'd like to back me. Links for all three are in the description of this video below. Uh, anyway, whatever you decide to do, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.